Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome to Elite Dangerous Beyond. Yes, I'm still playing Elite Dangerous, and you've dragged your way all the way up through the Federation ranks. And here's a question to ask yourself. So you're an Admiral. So what? What does it do for you? Yes, folks, you've dragged your way up through the Federation ranks. You're an Admiral. You've got that Federation Corvette at Rear Admiral. You've got the gunship at Ensign. You've got the assault ship at Chief Petty Officer. And you've got the drop ship at Midshipman. But what does Admiral give you? And how could Frontier make the game better to allow you to achieve those ranks and encourage you to go through it? Let's look at the definition of Admiral. So, straight off the bat, the most senior commander of a fleet or navy. And that's it, isn't it? Fleet or navy. Where's your fleet? And we mentioned this in a previous video when it came about talking about the king. You're a naval senior commander. You're an admiral. Where is your host of ships that you are to command? And that brings a question, wingmen. Perhaps a battle fleet that could come in Call a battle fleet in, like you can do in other games, like say orbital strikes, that sort of thing. If you're in the middle of a conflict zone, why not call in or attempt to call in on a merit basis a Federation capital ship to help turn the tide of the battle in that one particular area? I think that would be really cool. The ability to drop in there, things are going a bit squiffy, I'm going to use up some chits and turn the tide of political conflict and actual conflict within a system by bringing in a big capital ship to do your dirty work for you. I reckon there's a little bit of truck in that idea. I don't know what you think, but hey, let me know in the comments. So first point, that is the ability to bring in a capital ship. So moving on. They can do political duties and admin duties for naval operations, like give reports to the president. Not exactly what you call exciting, but should that have an impact on how you perform in power play? So with power play, you can attempt to mold political influence within the game by raising certain systems up to a certain level and deliver items and collect chits and whatever else you got to do and for that after four weeks and you achieve a certain level you can get some different weapons depending on the person who you've pledged to now that's all well and good and that's very exciting you may think but i think it's bereft of a little bit of excitement perhaps additional missions you should be able to carry out other than just delivering stuff Going through the ranks has kind of got the, the right idea. Go over here and attack that base. Go over there and get the information and bring it back, as opposed to just delivering the information from one point to another. I think being able to fly deep into enemy territory, landing at a base, getting in there, whether that be stealthy, or getting in there with a good attack on the base as well, would be a good idea. And then after that, zip out, zip back to the home system with your data, with your espionage, with all the information that you've gathered, or whether it's an experimental power core, or you pick up an experimental weapon or something, would be a good way to candor, you know, political as well as additional rank within the power play system. I don't know what you think. More advanced missions for power play? So again, what about bases, a base of operations, whether that be a ship, it could be a capital ship, it could be even a land base. And we touched on this briefly when I did the video, so you're an imperial king, so what? What about base of operations then, where you could have your fleet parked? You could have defences to protect your base. The plus and minus side of this could actually be if someone attacks your base and all your ships are parked there, then it's going to cost you the in-game credit. This would make things a bit more exciting, a bit more of resource management, and Frontier does tend to like the grind, so having to go out and find materials to keep your base operational and running, maintaining your ships, 
Perhaps there's a run on power converters or modular terminals that you need to keep your fleet running, or even the fleet that are patrolling your base. So what about resource management to help you out? Is that a good idea? So we've discussed wingmen, we've discussed capital ships, we've discussed bases. We've discussed resource management, we've discussed power play. What is there that you could possibly do to make going through the rank all the way from a nothing through to midshipman, through petty officer, through ensign, into rear admiral, then you get the corvette. Once you've got that corvette, where do you go from there? Would the possibility be of having access to more defined military tech be better? Perhaps elongate the process from within the game. And then, you know, all those people who are currently Admiral, send them up to Grand Admiral. I know technically Grand Admiral is meant to be less than Admiral, but this is a science fiction universe and Frontier can basically make what they want. Perhaps some other modules are released at Grand Admiral and that would possibly get rid of the terrible grind that's involved at the moment with the tech brokers and especially with Guardian technology. Having access to that cutting edge technology to help fit your ship out should every Admiral should have access to this and not pay the same as what other people do. So we've spoken about technology and access to it as you go up through the ranks. Why should you pay or have to grind as much as a peasant or a non-military ranked person or even a midshipman? You are a rear admiral and you should have additional benefits. You should have preferential docking at stations and we spoke about this in the Hey, so you're a king, so what video. We spoke about wingmen, we spoke about capital ships, we spoke about bases and resource management. These are a few ideas I've had in my mind on how perhaps Frontier could possibly make it less grindy in the game and breathe a bit of extra new life into, I think, an antiquated progression model up through the Federation ranks. I've been Ricardo, and this has been my question. So you're an admiral in the Federation Navy. So what? What does it do for you? Hey, if you haven't already done so, do me a favour and click that like and subscribe button if you're still with me. And then also look for that notification icon and ring that notification bell with notifications turned on. And that'll let you know I'm putting more videos like this on Elite Dangerous. Fly safe.